Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And I am going to give myself a treat today with a puzzle that is basically a snake puzzle. And that is because next month we are going to be beginning um, the month by launching our a Patreon snake puzzles pack, uh, which has been brilliantly put together by some superb setters whose names you will recognize. I'm not going to trail them at the moment, but I am going to mention that that is coming up next month. And uh, do join us on Patreon if you want to enjoy that. And today's puzzle, I hope, might be a sort of tester idea for getting into snake puzzles. It's the sort of thing that does appear in the pack, although not quite the same rule set as any of those. Um, don't forget also, of course, our apps. You can do Domino Sudoku on one of our apps and Gas Sudoku as well as the 500k. Uh, the latter is free, the gas, the CTC app is free, and you can go into that and then pay for the gas app or the Domino Sudoku app, and those are all available there. Now, we will also be streaming again on Friday, that's the plan. So we're going to go back to the series of puzzles um, where Simon wanted to guess the setter, um, and Riff Clown gathered together some of the skunk works and, and others, and... Uh, created some puzzles where they were meant to be in the style of the setter but and not too difficult although i think that bit was a problem with the ones we've looked at so far anyway let's uh, let's see how we get on on friday do join us for some sudoku solving live that'll be at 10 p.m our time so an hour before this video normally comes out wherever you are in the world but do have a look at this puzzle first. This is by Scruffermudder, who we've featured on the channel before. It's called Non-Venomous, which presumably refers to the snake. Now, Scruffermudder is clearly aware of the distinction, which somebody was very keen to point out to me, that you shouldn't really call a snake poisonous, because that implies that eating it would poison you. Uh, whereas a snake which has venom is venomous rather than poisonous. I'm not really sure that in normal language those distinctions apply, but I'm at least aware of the difference now. Uh, and the rules in this, <laughs> to get back to the Sudoku, normal Sudoku rules apply. That means the digits 1 to 9 appear in every row, every column, and every 3 by 3 box. Within the grid lies a single snake of orthogonally connected cells, which does not touch itself even diagonally. So the snake could look something like this, based on those rules. That snake consists of orthogonally connected cells, meaning either vertically or horizontally connected. Somebody else came up with a technical meaning of orthogonal, which didn't include that. I'm not... Anyway, this is standard Sudoku wording, so I'm afraid you'll have to learn it. Um, now, the snake cannot touch itself diagonally, so this snake couldn't then come up here and go to there, because it would be touching itself diagonally, and naughty snakes are not allowed to do that. The first and last cell on the snake, so those two in this case, contain the digit 9. Digits placed on circles and squares show the number of snake cells in the surrounding nine cells, including the circle or square itself, if it is on the snake. So if we look at this cell, the count in that cell would be the number of snake cells in the surrounding area, which looks like that, including itself. So the count there would be three, because those three are in that nine cell area and they're on the snake. Now, if you take an actual snake cell, the count here would be four because that cell and three others are in that surrounding area. Uh, circles contain odd digits and squares contain even digits. So all of the given did, all of these circles and squares give snake counts. Okay, well, those are the rules. Do give it a try on the link under the video. I am going to restart my clock and I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. Um, how the heck do we start this? I mean, what, what we can see, none of these circles and squares obviously contain zero. So the snake must visit them all in the sense that it must get within one cell of them all. 
I was going to say that means it visits every box, but actually it could just miss box nine, couldn't it? Um, ah, corners. Corners. Now, note in the rules, I didn't quite read that bit out. It says in the surrounding up to nine cells. So for perimeter cells and corner cells, the number of cells that can be in the snake is much smaller. Actually, these have to be a 1-3 pair because they're odd digits and the maximum number of cells they're even looking at is 4. So those have to be a 1 and a 3. Then this is odd as well. And now it sees a 1-3 pair. That is going to have to be a 5 because it's only counting 6 cells. 1 and 3 are ruled out, but it has to be odd. So... I think the snake has to include those four cells. For this to be five, and for the snake not to touch itself, and just to be one line, surely it's a U pentomino, either that way round or that way round. I think it must be. So I'm going to colour these cells as snake cells. Now which way round is it? And what's this going to be? And what's this going to be? Oh, gosh. This is going to be four or six. It's already seeing four snake cells. It can't see more than six. If that goes this way round, then... Ah, that cannot be because the snake would start in the corner and it has to begin and end with a nine. That is the sort of rule I can easily forget and probably will later, but for now I know it. So the snake can't be this way round because it would begin in this top left corner. And that's not a nine. So that is on the snake. Right, this is now not four anymore. It's got to be six. It can't be eight or the snake. That would be the whole snake. In fact, that would be an illegal snake because it would be, I don't think this snake is meant to uh, be circular. So that six is the answer. And that means the snake either comes through here and goes out here to give a sixth cell, or it starts here and it comes out here. Now, at least I've got both possibilities in mind, but this can't be snake because Connecting up with that would give a diagonally touching snake. This can't be snake. So green for non-snake cells. Now, if it goes through here, that's a three, and that's perfectly valid. If it comes to here, I don't see a problem with it. Five is fulfilled. Oh, this is a three. Ah! Okay, so three there is not valid. Right, sorry, that's been obvious for a while. That is a three, um, because it sees these three cells. So this is not a three. Oh, so the snake does not come out this way. This can't be a three. It can't be five now. You can't get five cells filled. That is a one. And the snake stops here. And nine is its head. There we go. We've found, we've found one end of the snake. And that's always quite important in these because finding the heads and tails really restricts the growth of the snake elsewhere. Now, the six has to be fulfilled by making that purple. And we've, well, I was going to say we've done box one. That's not true. We've colored box one. We've got some digits in place. I was going to say that can't be a one because it sees three snake cells, but this is a nonsense conclusion because there's no circle in here. That can be a one. Um, now these two are green because the snake's not allowed to touch itself. The snake is going to come out either through here or here. Sorry, I know I'm not going at this very quickly, but I do find it troublesome seeing how these patterns work. That is a three or a five, because it's on the perimeter. This is a two or a four. It can't be a six, or that would fill all those cells and be impossible. Now, this is a one. So itself is not on the snake, or it would have to see another cell as the snake gets there.
Um, hmm. Does that mean this is a two up here? How could this be a four? Yeah, this couldn't be a four because it would either include itself and it, actually that four would have to be like that and that would make the one a liar or it would not include itself and that would still make the one a liar. That must be a two. But I don't know if it's on the snake or not. If it, No, I do actually. If it was on the snake, it would end the snake. The snake would end in this cell, wouldn't it? Yeah, if, there were, if it was on the snake and was purple, one of these would therefore be purple leading to that, but the other one wouldn't be. So the snake would end here, and that can't be because it ends in a nine. So that's green. Now this one, the cell it sees cannot be this one because that would have to be the end of the snake and would have to be a nine, but it's not allowed to be by Sudoku. So that's green, and the snake goes here to fulfill that one. Then, this also isn't the end of a snake, it's because it can't be a nine, so it has two continuing bits of snake. That one goes green, because that can't be on the snake, you can't have two by two loops. Now, this can't be a five anymore, so it's a three. Um, and itself can't be on the snake because the snake would end there and a three is not a nine. So that's green. Now, I don't know. Yes, I do know the snake. This can't be purple because and that green because that would involve two ends of the snake touching. It. It's just nonsense. That is green. That is purple. The snake continues through here. Right, this digit cannot be one or three. Well, it's already seen four cells. It's odd. It could be a seven. So I'm going to put five or seven there. This one can't be one or three. That's getting quite interesting. So that's five or seven. Nine is clearly a nonsensical count digit. So one of these is a seven. And that's almost a full wraparound. That's either that being a seven, which is possible, or that being a seven, or that being a seven. Now, one of these is right. That's not right, I don't think. Because how would the snake get out of here? Oh, maybe it could stay in here. That could be the, there could be a nine at the top of the grid. Uh, okay. How about that not being right? That's the only way this one on the left could be a seven. Yeah, I think that would break this even cell here. Wouldn't that have to be a three? It couldn't touch another snake cell. That would break. So that is not a seven. Great, that's a five. That's a seven. This one is fully surrounded. So I can make those two purple. Not fully surrounded, almost fully surrounded. One of these two is purple and one is green. Now let's keep looking at... Yeah, I don't know if this five goes through that five or around it. And there may even be... Oh, it could even do a U. Well, I know it can't, but let's, let's not get too complicated. What is this digit? It's not allowed to be a five. It's seeing those two cells. It's not going to end here. So it's seeing at least three. It can't possibly be so seven. So that is a three. It can't be seven because I think seven always has to be green surrounded by a lot of snake cells. Pretty sure that's right. So this is three. It's going to see whichever of these continues on and no other snake cells. Ah, unless... This comes round here and ends in a nine right there. Okay, what's this digit? Is this a two or a four? It's even, it's doing a count. I feel it's got to be a two. How could it be four? It could only be four, I think. If, well, yeah, this, this can't be purple now. 
because that would involve this snake branching. That has to be green. So this being a four, it couldn't connect up there and be a four because that would complete this loop of the snake. And although the five could come in, I suppose if they were green or purple and that was purple, it could just be a four. So maybe I can't actually make that decision yet, which is annoying. Um, I don't know, there may be some way I can. I'm not brilliant at these. Oh, nine and six. I'm better at Sudoku. Nine and six have to be there. This is now a four, five, eight, triple, and that stops this being a four. I am better at Sudoku. That's now a two, which was what I expected. It can't be purple because it would be the end of the snake, and the end of the snake is always a nine. I'm still remembering that rule. So I think this is now going to have to be purple. No, still that could end in a nine here. Oh, interesting. Um, ah, but the three is not the end of the snake. So the two purples that the two sees have to be here and one of these. So that's going to be green. That is going to be green, which is quite important. This five is now fulfilled. We have to fill it in there like that, I think. This, ah, this is going to manage to be a four because that is going to be purple. There we go. That's how this becomes a four. Because once we've purpled these, we can green all of these and that and this. Yeah, and that's a four. There we go. Uh, sorry, this one is the four and that one is purple. Right, so now the snake goes this way round. It doesn't end in a nine here. These are green. The two is correct. The three is correct. The seven is correct. The three is correct. The four is correct. The five is correct. We're in business. Okay, so we've started the snake. I can green these. Ah, the snake cannot end here or here because they can't be nines. So it's got to come on here. Now, what's this going to be? Well, I was going to say it's got to be a four, but it could actually still be a six. So not sure. This one, ah, it's not going to be a four, is it? Oh, that's interesting. It's already got a four in the box. It's going to be a six. It's already seeing three. That has got to be a six. And all of these suddenly go purple. And we've got lots of southerly snake now. This has become a four by Sudoku, which actually surprises me a bit at this point. I don't really know. Does the snake go out here or are those four? Oh, no, it's already seen that one. Two, three. Well, it won't be this one because that would require one of the cells either side to be purple. It won't be that one. That's green. But I don't know which is the fourth cell for this four. This is an odd number. That's got to be five now. And this now is green. OK, that decides us. This is purple to fulfill the four. That becomes green. We still haven't found the end of the snake. We've got its head, but not its tail. That four is fulfilled. OK, this number. Let's have a look at that. Odd. And it sees two definitely already. It's not a seven because it's not surrounded. So it's three or five. This one is not six by Sudoku. So it's going to be two or four. It's obviously not eight. Hmm, tricky. OK, I'm going to do some Sudoku because as we worked out, that's the thing I'm better at. Seven and one. What have we got? Two, four, and eight up here. Um, one, two, three, five. Maybe I can't do much more. Oh, I'm going to have to do snake again. Hmm, four and four. One of those two is a four. Oh, what's this going to be? It's on the perimeter. It can't be a six. It's two or four. 
That might be quite a useful digit to come. This. Well, seven is impossible now because that's not purple. So it's one, three, oh. <laughs> And because it sees a seven there. It's so one, three, or five. It could actually be one if that snake went. Ah, oh, this is a corner, isn't it, of the snake? Because that's Greek. Well, unless this, the, unless this is the end of the snake, in which case this would be a nine. So I was about to color this cell purple, but this could theoretically be the end of the snake. This isn't the end of the snake because it's three or five. So if the snake turns down here, ah, oh, that's interesting. If the snake turns down here, how is that ever going to be three? Oh, it would be three, wouldn't it? It could never get to five. This can't get to five at all, actually, given that the snake comes through it. Yeah, there's no way. That's a three. Do I know it? Yes, I do know it's not a one. It's already seen two. Right, that's a three. We know it's not the end of the snake. So the snake carries on to there or there. And that's all the cells the three sees. So these two are green. I really want to continue this snake down here, but... I cannot rule out that that's the end at the moment. What's this? This is odd. It's at least three. It's not five. So it's either three or seven. Now, if it was seven, well, I was going to say that either go that way round or that way round. Can't be that way round, actually. Okay, can I, yes, I can, oh, can I stop it being three? Can I say this is definitely a seven? I think it is a seven. Why do I think it's a seven? Because if this was three, it would have to end there and not come into these cells. So it would then go all the way round here well, this is working so far. And then join up after that for this to be three. That's weird. I mean, maybe that is possible. No, I'll tell you why it's not. And it's quite complicated. I don't know if this is necessary, but I'm going to do it this way. The only way for this to be three is if the snake ends there and comes out here. So it would have to come round here. It's for four is okay here. Four is okay here as well. But the snake is gonna have to come through or past this cell without ever going up to either of these and therefore, it's going to have to stay. Oh, maybe. Ah, is that? I don't think it works, but I don't think it's easy to see why it doesn't. This being a three is what I'm talking about. Oh, what would that make this? Oh, that's a nice way of doing it. Right, if that was a three, this couldn't be three or five. Or well, seven's too many for that once the corners, once any of the corners are green, that can't be a seven. So could it be a one? No, because the snake would have to come past it in at least two, indeed in at least three cells. So that cannot be a three, and that's quite complicated to see, but it's a huge deduction because that's now a seven. And sevens are always filling the four corners diagonally opposite, diagonally out from the sevens. They are all purple. And then three of the joins. Now it can't be that way round or the snake could never join up. So this is purple. It can only be that way round if this is the end and is a nine. 
And, oh yeah, this would be a four. Ah, but then the snake would never reach this cell. So it's not that way around either. That's purple, that's green. The snake is gonna have to join on down here somehow and then come out down here. Now, it can't finish. Well, that's gone green. It can't finish in this column because of that nine. So, it's got to reach this. It's got to finish in box seven. So touching or having touched this cell. which can't be a four now, because there's only those four cells available to see. They can't all be filled with snake, so that's a two. Snake is finishing here in a nine, remember. It's got, it can't finish there. I don't think it can go through this because it can't finish on that cell and it would touch two others and it would make it a liar. So that's green. It can't finish here because it finishes in a nine. It can't, this can't go purple because that would only see one cell. Hang on. This can go purple, but it's not the finish. That's the point. In fact, now that's a two, these are both purple. There is the finish of the snake and it's a nine. This is green, that is green. Oh yes, now this is four or five, so we can fill in four and make that green. This one is definitely gonna be three. It's already seeing two, you can't fill all of those, that's a three. Uh, and it is indeed a corner of the snake, so the snake goes there, that's green. Because of the three, we can make this green, that's purple. We just have to join the snake up here. Now, this is not a one, it's already seeing two cells. Um, what's this? Ah, this is not allowed to be a five because it's even. So that's a six. The snake comes through here, must finish here. That is now a five, a sort of W pentomino. It sees all of those. We have finished the coloring. We know where the snake is. We know its ends are nines. I didn't forget the rule. And we can do Sudoku now. I love this, this is fun. Right, that's an eight, because it sees four and five. Um, nine, two, seven, six, five. Right, uh, I don't know what to do, but it's just Sudoku, so I'm quite excited. That is eight or nine, four, six, five, three in the central box, there we go. Threes, can we chase threes around the grid? We certainly can, and threes are all done. How about fours? Not so much, no. Well, no. I mean, I've finished all the, cell, all the cells. No, this one, I know that by Sudoku, that's a two. Sorry, by snake rules, that's a two, and I hadn't filled in the number. That must be two in box one, actually, now. Seven, six, four, three. There's a nine in one of those two. Five, six, two, three, nine. Oh, I don't know. Three, nine, one, two. Seven is in one of those two. This is not the right way. Five and three. Two is in one of those two. And therefore is there in box six. And there in box five. And there in box eight and there in box nine not here and that's all the twos done so when you get on a roll with one of these digits it's quite helpful um seven four two three six five is in one of those five two three one six and nine still to place in column seven Now, there are no negative constraints. I must just check that because it almost feels like I don't quite have enough data left for the rest of the puzzle, but I'm sure that's not true. Five, three, eight, seven, four, two, 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 four, five. Wow, this is quite tricky, actually. I didn't expect that at this point. Um, ah, these can't be fours and that can't be a four. So the Oh yes, four, four, we get a four here, right. So the only place for four in column two is there. That makes that an eight. Okay.
Okay, so that is doing a lot of the stuff at the top here. Eight and six there. We've got seven and four to place. We've finished all but those cells in the top three rows. Four, three, eight, two, six. We get a five. We've got a seven in one of those two. Four, six, four, two, three, nine. That is seven or eight. Six, seven, seven, two. We've got a one, nine pair still to resolve in that column. Uh, four as I was doing, wasn't I? I was having some success, but I don't know, no. Four's petered out. Hmm, what else have I got going on? Five's not really. Nine must be in one of those two. I haven't thought about nines a lot. Oh, eight must be in one of these two. In fact, that is eight in its column. That's an eye wing. Ah, so slow. Right, this is a one, that's one or nine. So that's a useful pair. This must be seven. That's also one or nine. But in the row, we've got six and five here. Five, six, two, four, three. Um, oh, I thought that was going to be helpful. Five, eight is in one of those two. Hmm, five, six, three, four, two. So, eight and seven are up here. And it really does feel like I don't have enough data. Ah, okay, nine can't be there. So the nine in row seven has to be here. Oh, that's going to fix quite a few little bits and pieces. Nine, nine, that's a one. This is nine. Should have all the nines done now. There we go. They're all done. The one in row five is there. It's not a zero. That's seven or eight. Five, one, three, two, nine. I mean, it is the mark of a good puzzle when you just can't fill it in straight away. This is a naked eight. Once, you know, what I'm saying is once you've got the kind of thematic bits done, to not be able to fill in the rest means it's very tightly set up. Six, seven, eight are the possibles here. These are one, seven, and eight. I can fill in the one and a seven, eight pair, forming a seven, eight pair in row four. That's a five, six pair. This is seven or eight, but it sees an eight, so. That unwinds the seven and eights. That puts a six in this corner. Oh, I never noticed we got a three in the corner up at the top. Losing its religion. Well, it's a snake. Of course, it's got no religion. Um, five and six in the row eight there. This is eight and one. And now it is actually going to finish, which I was a little bit nervous about, I have to admit. Uh, four and five at the bottom here. Yes, we've got a four. That's a seven. Six and five. The last digit goes on the snake. And there we go. That is a lovely non-venomous snake puzzle. So quite approachable or a bit harder than that. Maybe a bit harder than that, but very entertaining. Lovely that it's able to be set up as a grid with just the odd and even cells giving the snake counts in it. I mean, the subtlety of that rule is a very innocuous rule that the first and last cell of the snake uh, contained the digit nine, but it's really important to the solve and I suspect to making it unique. And it's very nicely done. Thank you, Scruffamada. That was good fun. And uh, as always to all of you, thank you so much for watching. It is much appreciated that you spend any time with us. Hope you had a go at that puzzle. It's good. And if you enjoyed it, look out for the Patreon December Award, which will be the Cryptic Scriptures of the Snake Society. Look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye for now.